Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we created our Bachelor Monday board. It's a cheese board full of homemade goodies that I made and then some store-bought ones as well. So grab your best friend, grab your mom, grab your boyfriend, make this board and enjoy Bachelor Monday. Let's go. start with our candied pecans. Uh, in my bowls over here we have one egg white, a fourth a cup of coconut sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and then a cup of pecans. So we're going to want to start with our egg white. Go ahead get that in the bowl. And we're going to want to give this just like a little bit of a whisk. We want to get the egg whites kind of frothy and just incorporate a little bit of air into them. No more than like a minute or two right here you just want to see a little bit of bubbles and just get them moving a little bit perfect the egg whites are going to provide a nice crispy texture to our pecans and they're also going to allow all of the other ingredients to stick to them so your pecans go right in and then just go ahead give them a quick little stir right here before I started, I preheated my oven to 300 degrees, and then I also put some oil on my nonstick baking pan. If you have parchment, go ahead and use parchment. I just didn't have any today, so I just put olive oil down. So we got our pecans, our egg whites, quarter cup of coconut sugar. Um, if you want to use brown sugar, go ahead. I prefer coconut sugar. I like the taste. It still kind of has that molasses-y feel to it, um, but it's a little bit healthier for you. Half a teaspoon of salt. Salt is super important in this recipe. Although they are candied pe pecans, that salt really brings out all the sweetness. And then half a teaspoon of cinnamon. If you don't like cinnamon, just go ahead and leave it out. No worries. I love cinnamon and I think it's great with pecans because they naturally have such a maple leaf flavor. All right, now we're just gonna lay them out on our prepared baking sheet. Bring that baking sheet right to us. And then with our spatula, we're just gonna wanna create a nice even layer so that they can get nice and crispy. These are gonna go into that 300 degree oven for 30 to 40 minutes, and we're gonna flip them halfway in between. All right, we got our nice even layer. These are going in the oven, and then we're gonna go ahead and get started on the hummus. So the first thing is a cup, uh, it's a 15 ounce can of drained chickpeas. Some people, once again, they like to peel their chickpeas. The difference is not that huge. Let's see if everything will fit in this food processor or flyaways. I'm going to go ahead and just pulverize these really quickly to make sure that we can get all of our other ingredients in there. Okay, the next thing is quarter cup of lemon juice. It's just one lemon squeezed. I squeezed it off camera. Quarter cup of olive oil. Just pour that right in and then let's get all of those mixed up. This is going to be hummus in parts. Yeah. A little food processor that could. And then we have a quarter cup of tahini. Tahini is toasted sesame paste. It's what's going to make our hummus extra, extra creamy. Just pop that in there. Kind of push it down into the chickpea mixture. And we'll give it again another whirl. One garlic clove goes in, and then this is a combination of one teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of oregano, and then half a teaspoon of pepper. Let's pop that cap right on. Okay, so the hummus is fully incorporated. We're gonna take it out of the food processor and just transfer it right to this bowl. I like my hummus to have a little bit of texture um, so this is just a little bit slightly chunkier than the traditional hummus that you would find like in the supermarket But this is gonna taste ten times better It's so fun to make it homemade and it'll last actually longer pop this in the fridge um, Cover it with plastic wrap pop it in the fridge until everything else is ready and then we'll add it to our board at the end So this is the manchego. You're just gonna wanna take all the wax off, cut it right down the center, 
and then you're just going to want to make strips nice and thin bite-sized strips down the entire length of the cheese. And then we're just going to throw these pieces into the bowl. We're just getting everything prepped and ready so that when it is time that your friends come over and you guys are getting excited to watch The Bachelor, you can just throw everything onto the board and it's super easy to assemble. Parmesan, the rind is going to be on the back and then the bottom of the cheese. Once again, we just want to cut that darker part away and store it in the fridge because it adds so much flavor to things that we'll be cooking for a long time. All right, just pop this in my little basket at the end of my board. And then with Parmesan cheese, I really like to just kind of break it off into craggy little bits because that's usually how you see it served at restaurants and things like that. So don't be too particular with it. All right, so all of our cheese has been chopped up. They're in their separate bowls. And now it's time to move on to all of the other things that are going onto the board. So with the strawberries, you're gonna just want to keep the stems on them. Um, once again, it's just another um, different level of color that's gonna be on the board. And you're just gonna wanna slice them right down the middle. So that way you can see the nice different colors inside the strawberry, the pink line and the white around it. And then we're just gonna lay these out on our board so they look nice and pretty. And I just gave these a quick rinse right before I was going to cut them. That's definitely enough strawberries. We're gonna go ahead and move on to our green apple. I'm just gonna cut half of it right down the middle and just make long strips of the green apple right there. You're gonna wanna throw some lemon juice on these if you're not using them right away because they will oxidize and turn brown. So just go ahead and give a quick squeeze of lemon on them as well. These go in with the strawberries, keep all the fruit together. And now the carrots, they're already peeled, which I love. So we're just gonna throw about half of these onto the board. And then honestly, I like the little green stem. I think that's really cute. They're gonna hold together really nicely. And then we're just gonna give these a cut right down the middle and just keep them open, just very similar to how the strawberries are. You can see the different layers of color and of texture and everything inside there. Ooh, look at that. It's really nice and light and purple in the middle. I think that's so cute. And then we'll just get everything into the fridge let it chill, and then the last thing that we have to do is break the, bake the brie right before we're ready to assemble the board. I love to cook my brie with the honey and the raspberries already on it. So this is actually some local Sarasota honey. I love using local honey um, in any of my recipes. So we're just gonna give this a nice, good drizzle along the top of the brie. Let's just go ahead and just go full on right here. Perfect. Just a nice drizzle, probably two to three tablespoons if I had to measure it out. Pop that in there. And then we're just gonna sprinkle the raspberries right on top. You wanna put the honey down first so that the raspberries stick to your brie. And you're just gonna wanna put them right on the top around the bottom as well because the, breeze, the brie may ooze out just a little bit and then the raspberries will kind of act as that barrier to keep it nice and intact. We're gonna pop this in our 300 degree oven for about five to seven minutes. Okay, so the brie is out of the oven. It ended up cooking for about 10 minutes, so a little bit longer than we predicted. And we are going to slide this onto its own plate because it deserves its own plate, that's for sure. Just be really careful with it. It should stay together because of that, um, kind of membrane, I guess, um, on the top and the bottom. You can see the raspberries got super oozy. We're just gonna go ahead and just put those over there. So this is going to be on its separate plate. We're gonna keep that up there. So we have our brie, it's on its separate plate. And then we have a mixture of our baked and our store-bought goods. Ina Garten, who is the Barefoot Contessa, she's the end-all be-all, I love her so much. She said every cheese board should be a mixture of um, homemade things and store-bought things. So that's exactly what we have here.
All right, and now it's time to taste this incredible board. Oh, I'm so, so, so excited. I don't know exactly what combination I wanna do, but um, I love the bread. I always add a drizzle of honey first because that's gonna allow my cheese and all my other toppings to stick to it. Let's go ahead and do a piece of parm and then a Marcona almond right here. Perfect, and then a dried apricot, why not? All right. Mmm, incredible, so good. The parm is salty, the bread is nice and soft, the honey is sweet, the almond is crunchy. All different textures, all different flavors. It's so fabulous. It's the perfect thing to enjoy with your best friends, your boyfriend, your mom on Bachelor Monday. And I love it so much. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you do your own version of your charcuterie board, be sure to tell me about it in the comments.